This farm, this whole area here, was owned by the Scandrick family from about the 1860s and four generations lived here and farmed it. They first of all had a little house down the front and then they had this house built. It was a classic New Zealand farm. Even in something like the early 1900s, they were growing brilliant dahlias and chrysanthemums, which they won prizes with. So it's always just been a brilliant garden around a farmhouse. They farmed the whole range, and then they had a full range of horticulture at times. They were especially known for the apricots, which they had an orchard all along the flat, right close to the sea and they had honey and um, I suppose a classic New Zealand farm. You grew what you could to provide for your family. This is Cecile Bruner. It's a classic heritage rose and I planted it maybe eight or nine years ago after I first came here and began working on the garden. People like Fran Scandrick was such a fanatical gardener. She was here on the farm and she loved gardening, so there was a chance to grow a myriad of things and she just loved growing things everywhere. She had a brilliant garden. So that's part of what I've repeated or continued. That traditional garden that was there for masses of flowers if you wanted them. Because of this bowl shape here of the farmland and the high cliffs along there, if we get a southerly, it goes right over the top and there's a microclimate down here. We can be three or four degrees warmer than anywhere else without the wind. So we can sit here in the sun and everyone else is inside staying out of the wind. And it does make growing things brilliant. That's probably why the Scandrits practiced horticulture along with the classic cows and sheep and pigs and everything else they had. When I first began volunteering here and, and took on the garden, I followed the basic shapes that were already here. You know, there was still a, a lot of quite mature trees. There's apples, there's feijoas, there's grapefruit, persimmon, all sorts of things, even in the smaller front area. So it's easy just to follow someone else's pattern and fill things in. And I try f to put into the garden older cultivars so I sort of expand on what I find, but the, the cultivars I'm using are from my mother's garden, so they've got probably 50 years as a cultivar. They're not the newest modern hybrid, and, and I followed that through with the garden. If I've found or seen things, then that's what I'll try and grow. There's also some things I haven't found, like rhododendrons and camellias, which they may have had, but they hadn't survived till the point where I started again. Over towards the front here, there's um, what's been labelled a lime tree, but the Scandrick children used to trick other children into trying to eat it because in the middle of winter, it's covered in all these little orange fruit that look very much like mandarin, but one bite tells you it's not. It is just intense. It's beyond sour. It's just such an intense. That's why I think it was classed as a lime because two slices and a jug of water and you've got all the flavour you need. Here are all the new fruit. They're going to be brilliant this winter. Smothered in little orange mandarin looking fruit, but as sour as they come. Here, this one's just on ready. It's actually, I've pulled the center out, so just ready for eating. As I say, most of this garden was Fran's. You'll find things like little patches of freesias stuck here or there, just as little bright yellow surprises. But also, there's several grapevines in the garden, probably about five or six that were here from Ray Scandrit's time. This is a, a Albany surprise, which is just the classic Auckland dessert grape. Like, they're the ones that people have in their garden and they're nice to eat. Ray Scandrick used to make wine from them and it's, he's 
is almost infamous for how abysmal this wine was until finally got someone to be honest with him and say, no, it tastes awful. And he said, thank goodness you said that. I was always thinking, this is horrid wine, but everyone was telling me something different. This tree I'm standing beside is a mountain pawpaw, and I purchased it particularly to come in the garden, mainly because of some photos of uh, Fran Scandrit up here in the garden over there, and there was a couple growing. So I thought, oh, I'll get one. They're probably from the time in the 1970s where Fran and Ray were trying out all sorts of what were then exotic tropicals is like the bananas but there's also tropical guavas and chamoyas and avocados all these things in the 1970s were really quite radical plants to have whereas now they're becoming more common in a garden in the back of the garden there's this big group of plants which are crinniums. I imagine they've been here since the 1920s or maybe earlier from the time of Lucy Scandrit, Ray Scandrit's mother, who continued to live with them when Fran and Ray were here. Because I know they were quite fashionable or growing in gardens in the 1920s and probably earlier. It's, it's a very prolific plant and it looks stunning. This is um, mid-December when it's just at its best, so it's stunning for the moment. This is obviously a lily pond, where it is now. There's also some goldfish down here in the pond, and they were really quite small um, eight years ago, but they're very, very healthy. And we also have some little frogs in here in summer. And if you go by a child's assessment, this is a frog pond with goldfish and lilies, you know, reptiles, fish, plants. Whereas to a gardener, you put your lilies first, and the goldfish and the frogs are the accessories. It's also this area here is to do with this funny shape over here was a honey shed because that was one of the things that the Scandrits produced. They had major lines of beehives over on that hill. This is before there were roads and everything there. It was a bit more rumpty when I first came with more lumps of concrete which we took off and cleared the soil out and found it has a concrete floor. And the soil was so consistent that I imagine at one time it was used as a vegetable garden. I mean, once the proper structure had fallen over. Because of a garden, your planning is always a year or even a season. Fran was a, a brilliant gardener and with living in a somewhat isolated place, it was just a great personal activity. For people that garden, you just, you don't think week by week, you think season by season.